Hey, hey, hey. It's another Sunday night. Time to come in and focus your energy for the week. Join me. Tarian Hyman here. Natural Forces Studio in the Empowered Spirit Circle on Facebook. Hey, Vicki, we just got back from the retreat. Come on in and join us. I'm blissing out from this weekend, although it was frigid up there. It was like 18 degrees. Yeah. Come on in and join us. I'm just opening up. Time to tune in to what's going on this week. Join us. We're going to be talking about creating that spiritual practice. We're going to be talking about how do you do it? Why do you do it? What do you do it for? That's exactly what we're going to be talking about. Thank you. Yes, it was a really great weekend. Yep, the flowers representing the energy of our masters, our teachers. Yay. Definitely, it was a really good thing. And we actually started the retreat really learning some new tools to help us build that spiritual practice. What is it you do? What is it you do to create that spiritual practice for yourself? Hey, Laurie, glad you made it home okay. That's what we're going to be talking about. I'm going to be sharing a little bit on how to do that. We have a really great week coming up, a little bit of intense energy tonight and tomorrow. We're going to talk about that too. But what do you do? Do you have a spiritual practice? And do you even know why we need a spiritual practice? And I'm not talking religious practice. I'm talking spiritual. That's what I'm talking about. So yes, that's what we're going to talk about. I didn't get to post the cards today for you to pick. So I'm actually going to offer a reading. And then if you're around and want me to pick a card for you, I'll do that. But I did turn over the cards and prepare it. So I've already got the energy of what's going on. So I'm going to put them together for a reading for us. And then we'll do a little centering meditation as well. So before we get started here, I'm just even logging on the computer. I'm going to go ahead and share this to the Empowered Spirit Circle. If you're not in the group, please do. Come on and join us. It's growing. We're connecting with each other. I really enjoy having that group there. I really appreciate everybody that's in it, asking questions, sharing things. It is a way to build community. Even though it's virtual, we hold each other accountable, right? We help each other. We support each other. So much of what we talked about this weekend, too. We're all growing and we're shifting. So to have people to help us through some of these things, it's really, really important. So I invite you in there. I'm going to just share it for right now. Didn't get everything done, but hey, that's okay. I really wanted to, whoops, I really wanted to come forward with this tonight and be here to share. All right. Definitely one more share. Here we go. Sharing in the feed. Ha! Ah, so take a breath and think about it for a moment and let me know. What is it that you do? Do you have a spiritual practice? We're also going to be talking to spiritual space. Do you have somewhere that you can go each and every day to build this practice for you? You know, I talk about this on my podcast. Yes, my podcast is going to be airing soon. New platform. It's coming out. The Empowered Spirit Show. Very excited to be launching. I'll be on Lipson. I appreciate blog talk, but I've changed my format. Yes, a little bit more quote unquote formal traditional podcast. Podcasts aren't that old, so to call them traditional is kind of funny. But anyway, it will be coming out and you'll be able to find it on Apple Podcasts or the Androids or any of your favorite podcast medium. All right, there we go. I've got it shared and maybe you'll do the same for me. Just hit that little button. I know Facebook doesn't like you to say that anymore. But hey, Sean, glad you made it home too. Yay. All right. So why do we need a spiritual practice? Why do you think? What is it for you? As we talked about today, we really need that spiritual practice first and foremost to know where our energy is. So many of us claim to be empaths, right? So many have these abilities and we don't know really what that's about. And when we use that ability and that time for us to create that spiritual practice, then we know where our own energy is, and we can better detect when we're picking up everybody else's energy. But if we don't have that time to sit with ourselves, to open up our voice, to open our chakras up, if we don't have that, we take it in and we get confused and then we think all of this is our energy. And then we can't trust the messages that we're getting. So I think that number one is the number one reason, right? Maybe not number one, but a really big reason. I do think it's number one. Know your own energy. Really know your own energy. When you know your energy, the struggles come up. Okay, you two, I see you chatting. Gonna have to separate you two. Just teasing. When we, <laughs> when we know our energy, 
and we go through struggles, we go through challenging times, then we can understand better what it's about. When we're picking up other people's energy, we can understand what that's about too, right? We have to be able to know the energy that's around us. We have to be able to know what we're picking up and what we're not. When we're in crisis, right? This helps us to soothe our own soul. It helps us to answer our questions. When we work with our own energy and we know it's ours, we're more confident. We can show up better and we can show up more empowered. Those are the main reasons I really think that we need that spiritual practice to help us through challenging times, to build the confidence, and to build the ability to stand up and do the work that you do. Otherwise, we get all these voices going on, we get all this chatter going on in the mind, we're taking on everybody else's energy, so we can't make good choices. We can't understand what it is that we're trying to do in our own spiritual practice, right? What do you two think, huh? Laurie, what do you think? Why do we need a spiritual practice? Laurie from Z Girl, Sean, why do you need a spiritual practice? What do you guys think? What's the number one thing you think it is? Big question, right? So the next question that comes after that, after you start thinking about why do I need it and you start realizing, well, maybe I do, is how do I do that? How do I build that spiritual practice? First, we start very simple, very easy with the spiritual space right? Creating that space for you, right? Okay, so Laurie says it grounds us and helps us shine out light into the world. Yes, Laurie from Z Girl Astrology. I love that. I love that. And Sean, what about you from Wild Lotus? What do you think? I think I totally agree, Laurie. It helps to ground us and shine our light. Really important. So the way that we start to build that is creating that sacred space. All right, Sean says it helps you to walk through life one day at a time. Absolutely one day at a time. Totally agree. One step in front of the other. Let go of the fear, right? That fear can just get in the way, right? We have to walk the walks and walk the talk. Walk the walks. Yeah, we do. We have to walk our talk too. That's what I thought you were saying, but walk the walks. We do. We really do. And this helps us to do that. So creating a sacred space doesn't have to be that huge of a job. All right, I've created the sacred space here. All right, very easy. This is my virtual classroom. This is my virtual place of being. So you take, I have a little bit of the elements, right? I've got the fire and with the sage to light. I've got the water with the flowers. I've got the flowers from the earth. I've got the crystals from the earth. And we represent that spirit. And that's really all you need, a place to sit just like this. So each and every day when you come back to it, you build that energy. And then when you do have troubles, you have a place to be. You come, it comforts you, the vibration is building, so it will soothe that soul for you. So it can be just as simple as this. I like to create, um, I like to change them around here and, here and now, so this is kind of my new year ability to create the sacred space and to share with you guys. So what is it you can do to create a space for you? Do you have one? Do you have one or two, right? I have one here, I have one at my studio, right? What do you have for yourself? Very important, and it can be that easy. If you remember the elements, fire, air, earth, water, right? That's an easy way to bring it in, and then you can add it in. And actually, I do talk about this on my upcoming podcast. It's one of the first, second episode, creating that sacred space using a few, meaning air, A, F, fire, E, earth, W, water, a few elements to help you remember and create that space for you. And then we tar start to build that practice. Practice can be very easy too, just sitting. That's all we need to do. Just sit, be quiet, observe. Now the mind takes over, so then we activate the breath, and that's going to help the mind calm down. But it really can. It can really be as easy as that. That's how we begin. So if you want to know a little more, be sure to check out the podcast. It should be out this week. I'll post on it. Check it out and listen to it, and let me know what you think. Let me know how you build a sacred space and what are the practices that you do to offer your spirit that break, that rest, the ability also to grow and to develop what it is that you're searching for. All right, so those are my tips for today. Now, what does we have for the week ahead? Interesting week, all right? The energy's gonna build a little bit tonight and tomorrow. Got the dark of the moon coming in. We've got the new moon coming in late on Tuesday night. First one of the, whoops, first one of the year. So big, important moon, all right? But to get there, we're gonna have to sit with a little bit of that energy. I already kind of feel it from me coming up, a little bit of that stuff. Granted, some of it's just clearing energy. But tomorrow's not really a day to do too much, all right? Don't try to push against the tide there. And actually, for many people, it's a day off. So maybe you have that time to rest, to recoup, 
all right? And just kind of release whatever that excess struggle is that you're having. And then Tuesday evening, we're going to get into that new moon, right? Beautiful time. New moon coming in, first one of the year. It's the winter, all right? So we still want to set intentions, not like we're actually going to have to act on them, but we do want to write them down. It's the first one. So what were those intentions you started out with the new year? What are your intentions going forward? Maybe they've changed. Maybe you've adapted them. Or maybe they're brand new, right? Or maybe they're the same. Whatever it is for you, be sure to write them down. We are talking about this today, right, Laurie? Write them down. Say them out loud. Bring those intentions forward. This is the first one of the year. Really big important. Time to plant some of those seeds in the etheric, all right? We don't have to go outside and plant yet, all right? Don't be confused like we sometimes want to be. Don't be confused. But we just have to set those intentions. What is it? And maybe it's just one for right now. That's okay. You don't have to have a whole year planned right now. You don't have to know all the answers. But set some intention for yourself when that new moon comes in late Tuesday night, Wednesday. Thursday's probably, I don't know, when I was kind of looking up on the calendar, Thursday looks like a really good day to put all those intentions out. But start to think, what are those intentions for me? All right, really important. And yes, tomorrow can present a little bit of trouble. Even you might feel it tonight. You might feel a little bit of like uneasiness even in your sleep. That's okay. All right, go back and breathe. Build your spiritual center. There you go. So that you can move through it. Then as we get towards the end of the week, Thursday's a productive day. Towards Friday and Saturday as well, it'll start to move out. And you will feel that new energy coming forward. All right, so take it easy tomorrow. If you have the day off, really take it easy. Take some time for yourself. Tuesday, just kind of release some more. By Tuesday evening, you're going to be feeling a lot better. Go ahead and set your intentions on Wednesday. Really write them out. Even a little into Thursday, you have some time to set those intentions. Get your intention book. Get a new one. It's the new year. And start writing them down, saying them out loud. I intend to. I wish to. So that's the energy of the new moon coming in. And then you're going to feel productive on Thursday and Friday both, Saturday into the weekend. So that's what we have for the week ahead in terms of energy and how to move forward. All right, so let's just take a moment before we draw cards. Take a deep inhale. Going to light some of that fire. That's part of my spiritual center here, my sacred space. Take a nice deep inhale. Oh, and just exhale away. I've been traveling down. Get that bus from the car gone. Inhaling and exhaling. Just take a moment. Bring your energy in from the weekend. Just feel it pulling in right into the center, opening the heart, centering that energy. Take another deep inhale, bring it up the body, up into the heavens, and exhale, pull it all the way back down, deep into the earth. And again, inhaling, centering, pulling in, all the many places you've been, through the week, through the weekend, pull it in. Exhale back down. Opening up, inhaling, calling in divine guidance, your masters, your teachers, call in your spirit guides. Ask for guidance this week as we move through. Ask for guidance on these intentions. What is in the highest good? Honor the guides, the teachers that come in for you. As we open up, we're in the season of winter, the time of dreaming and envisioning. We honor the direction of the north, the east, the south and the west, above us, below us, right into our very centers, right into our hearts, opening up, opening up as we move through this week with the highest intentions, bringing in the energy of that new moon as we let go. Maybe there's some darkness first. We open up. All is good. All is good. Coming back, feeling your heart centering your energy for you. Just feeling that energy right here. When we put our intentions out, yes, we think about them in the brain. We drop into the heart, though. So just imagine as you exhale, imagine those intentions going out from the heart. Opening up the heart, releasing them out into the universe. Inhaling. And exhaling, feeling yourself centering, feeling the spiritual body coming right over the physical body, shoulders and shoulders, hips and hips, feet and feet. Feel yourself centering. Take a deep inhale. And exhale. 
Thank you for the hearts, Laurie. Coming back. Feel your energy coming back as we go to look at the cards. So this reading is for all of us, all right, as we open up to this week. The first card, the first card that comes up was the tower, all right? Not too many people really like this card when it comes up because it's all about, it's all about change. And in many cases with the tower, it's unexpected change. See how it's like, uh-oh, lightning strikes, things are changing, but that's okay sometimes, but being prepared for that change. So this can help project into that energy. How do I work with that? As Larry was saying today, they help prescribe, right? They're prescriptions for us. How can we work with this card for our highest good? Well, the card that comes right after is the nine of wands. I haven't drawn this card. I love it. So the nine of wands is about doing your work. It is about reaching that plateau. All right. So I think this helps us to understand that maybe it is time to make some changes. All right, you've done a lot of great work. It's almost complete, but don't hold on to stuff too long that's too old. Honor what you're doing. Honor the work that you've done. Wands are about passions and desires, but look how it climbs. So following that card of the tower, I think that can help us understand, okay, instead of the tower all coming down, how can the work that you've done, how can what you've already built help you to make those changes? right? How can you use this in knowledge? Maybe something is coming to an end and we don't always throw away our energy. Maybe you're shifting jobs or maybe you're adding to it. You don't have to change all that and, and deny it or not use it. Where can you bring those talents forward in a new capacity? I feel like that's what it's doing because the card that comes right after is the six of cups. And this card is about those deep connections. Lots of times it's family, but look at the roots. Look at the roots to the tree, God, they go as deep as they go tall just about. This helps to balance us, it's the heart. So if we're making changes and we're working with our passions, that tower's not gonna fall as hard. It's when we're working against it that it can come crashing down. So I think that the energy here is about, there is change coming. There is change, but don't let it be a surprise for you. How can you help and direct that change for your highest good? All right, the universal card, too, that comes in here, too, is the Four of Pentacles, all right? And this card is about not holding on too tight, right? Look at all the balance there. There is abundance, but don't hold on too tight. Don't tie it up. Don't be stingy, either. Let the energy flow. Keep doing your work. That's great, but let it flow. And I feel like that can come into some of these cards, too. Like, when we hold on to those thoughts too much, we hold on to the same thing over and over and over, we can't flow, and we can't have that prosperity and abundance come in. So honor the fact that change is coming, and that's a good thing, I think. I know in my own life, I did fight it at times, and I do fight it at times, but also I embrace it now because I see there's really some shift and some energy. It's kind of like straightening up your spiritual corner. It feels great when you straighten it up, moving some energy around. It feels good. And that's what this is suggesting. You've built a lot. Honor your work. You've done great work. This shows that building up, leading up to that moon. Look, it's a little crescent moon too, just like we have outside. The moon is winking. And then we have the energy of the card reminding us of our roots. Where did you come from? What is it about the work that you do that brings that energy forward for you and that can you can help then in turn serve? I know many of you listening on here are healers and workers and service people. Where can you help serve to for the highest good? Don't hold on too tight. Let the abundance flow. There's a lot of balance and everything's coming into the center, but don't have it so that you can't keep that energy moving. All right, great energy as we go in. New moon, new intentions. Let that darkness go. Perfect card to start the week. Let it go. All right, take a nice deep inhale. I'm going to draw a card for Paige. All right, Paige, I know you're not on here, but later. This is for you. All right, regarding some messages we were just talking about. This card is for you, Paige. All right, this is the four, another four, four of swords, and it's got that little sheep there. All right, again, it's a balance, but swords is about the, the mental plane. All right, so sometimes we have to honor. Look how it's shining right in that third eye center page. We have to honor our gifts, not fight them. And even if we feel a little differently, all right? It's like honor it before those swords do get us. And don't let other people's actions or words get to you. Keep it above you. You see that? I feel like that's a little bit of what you're feeling right now. What are they saying? What are they judging? What are they doing? All I want to do is, is open my third eye. And that's okay. So don't let them get to you. Keep that above. Stay grounded, all right? Take it easy on yourself and open up to that energy. Look at the light coming up. Look how it's floating above. Keep it there. Don't let it come in, all right? Use your energy tools. You know this. So that's the card for you, all right? 
How about you guys? Anybody else? All right. I don't know. Laurie, be in alignment. Walk the talk. Yes, that's exactly what I thought you meant. All right, Sean, have a card. Definitely. You too, Laurie. All right, Sean, this one's for you. Take a deep inhale. We've drawn some great cards this weekend. How can this enhance what you're doing right now? Love it. It's a six. And it's got that butterfly. All right. This is all about transformation. All right. Perfect card as we go into this. All about transformation. Four of Wands. Our passions, our work, we transform. Right now, this is really kind of the the totem that's been coming forward for a lot of people, this butterfly energy. It doesn't start out looking like this, right? So that freedom is there for you to grow, for you to shift, and for you to change, and really to fly your wings. Yes, sir. Perfect card. It's a six. Six is also about community. Start reaching out to that community. Definitely. I love it. Perfect for you. All right, Miss Lori. Z girl. Z girl. Ace of Swords. Ace of Swords. Something new is coming forward and a thought in how you're working with something. All right. I feel like that's important for you to see. Yoo-hoo, woo-hoo. All right, Laurie, Ace of Swords. And look at how that infinity comes around it. It's a beginning, so there is a shift coming. I know you've been concerned with what's going on there. You've got it. Dig deep. It's there for you, and it's going to be a new beginning, and there's going to be some good things coming. There are two thunderbolts. See that? But that's kind of like, okay, this is important, and I know you know this. But yes, there is a new approach to what you're working with. Makes sense? I think it does. Love this card for you. Absolutely. Love this card for you. Yay, definitely. All right, Amy, card for you. Here we go. Three of Swords. This one's interesting, Amy. Look at this. This one's. This one is a little bit about conflict. All right, three sometimes can do that, and this one looks like a little bit. It's of the. It's of the Swords. All right, so three is a little bit of a conflict. Where is there conflict for you? All right, what is going on? There's a little bit of a wounding there. When we can embrace that wounding, we can heal. So there's also some healing going on. And this isn't the mental plane. What thoughts are you beating yourself up over? All right. Has somebody said something to you? Three sometimes represents that group energy. Threes can be hard sometimes. So this is kind of reminding you to look at those words. If there is some healing, if there's some wrong, either on you or for you, offer some, offer some forgiveness. Really big. This card seems to go and ask for forgiveness. Forgive what it is because underneath is a lesson. All right, I hope that helps. Give me a thumbs up to let me know. All right, definitely. All right, Millie. Hey, Millie, how are you? All right, I got a thumbs up. Yay. Millie, I drew the Mother of Swords for you. Wise Owl. All right, you take in lots of information. You look at it. Now, the only thing I will say about this is don't nitpick everything you take in. Observe without judgment. All right, this reminds us to do that. All right, Amy, thanks. Good. Observe without judgment, all right? Also remember the energy of a mother is very nurturing. So when we notice everything and we see all the details, how can you put this out in what you see and observe, right? And the gifts that you have in a very nurturing way. That's what this is talking about. Look to the nurturing part of when we see way too much. And I know this, I know this feeling because I see a lot and have to be quiet sometimes about what I see. And so we, where do we find the ability to use that information from the heart, from that mothering energy and not from the critical nitpicking? All right. Hope that makes sense for you. A really great card to think about as we go through the next couple of days, especially. All right. All right. Anybody else? Can't quite see everybody. There we go. I think, I think I got everybody. So as you go through the week, remember tomorrow, dark of the moon, take it easy on yourself. Remember there are changes coming. Honor the work that you're doing. You're building a good path, but things are going to come to an end. So be the guide to that tower energy. All right. And then return to the roots. Dig deep, dig into Mother Earth so that you can feel that balance as above, so below. All right? And then don't hold on too tight. I lost my four of pentacles somewhere. Don't hold on too tight. Let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. All right, I got a couple more thumbs up. All right, guys, it's going to be a great week. Look for the introduction of my podcast. It should be out this week. I've been working on it. Very excited to bring that out and forward again. Come on over to the Empowered Spirit Circle. Come March. We're going to start manifesting together. So come on in and join our group as well. All right, guys, a big thank you to the retreat. All of those that joined in, we have some new Reiki masters coming forward. Very, very excited about that. Aho, Amy, thank you. Very excited about that. 
very grateful for this weekend to do this work, to up the vibration. We're in Alabama, folks, out there listening. We did it. We did. We had nine new Reiki masters come forward. Very excited about that. All right. Everybody take a nice deep inhale. Exhale out as we open up to this week ahead. Be guided. Be in alignment. Create that spiritual center, that spiritual space for you, your sacred space. Post pictures. Show me in the Empowered Spirit Circle your spiritual space, your sacred space. All right? Have a great week. See you online to your spirit. Namaste.